Hey guys, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. I have a real good case study for you today. Uh, this is a 2009 Nissan Altima. And, uh, well, let me show you the scan tool here. We'll get inside, it's raining. It's nice and warm in here. <clears throat> so, the issue is with the TPMS system the tire pressure monitoring system. Now, the owner, she brought it here, you know, for an oil change, and uh, she took it down to Florida and New York City, so a lot of highway driving. And her complaint was that she said, uh, when she goes above 85 miles an hour, there's a shimmy. I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> uh, how about you slow down a little bit? She's like, well, I don't really like to drive slow. I'm like, well, We'll do what we can here. Uh, her other complaint was the little exclamation point, the orange exclamation point was coming on in the dash. That's the, the TPMS indicator. She said it was intermittent, sometimes it was flashing, sometimes it would stay on, sometimes it would go away. So, first things first, scan for codes here. So, in Nissan you have to go to the body control module, right here, BCM, and the BCM stores codes for any of the kind of sub modules, I guess. So we go to BCM, read codes, and there's a C1711 rear left C service manual. Uh, I looked it up, it was rear left uh, signal not received from the tire tire pressure, you know, transmitter inside the wheel. And also there's a C1708 uh, which was for the front left. I'm like, okay. Um, I reset the codes and took it for a test drive to see if I could recreate the problem. And at first, so let's see, let's go to our tire pressure monitor right here. Live data, all signals. So, when I first started driving, all the, uh, all the pressures displayed fine. You know, I set the tire pressure, checked it with a manual gauge, everything was fine. All the IDs are registered. You can even check the, uh, if you go to work support, you can actually read the registered ID numbers. So, they're in hexadecimal form. And you can see the rear left is a different sensor and that is because about a year ago that aluminum valve stem was actually leaking so the sensor itself was fine but you know the the aluminum stem was leaking so I had to replace it with a uh, you know aftermarket NAPA uh, sensor which came with its own ID number so that's why it's different but you know it worked just fine for over a year and but now when we look at our live data you can see the rear left is registering zero PSI. Now this is after about a you know, 10 mile test drive and if, you know, at first like I said they were reading fine but after about 10 miles the light started flashing I went out of here, scanned for codes, saw the rear left wasn't registering came back in here and then uh, for a while I actually read it again and now it's um, zero so there's an intermittent problem with that sensor now on the test drive I also noticed that there's a humming sound coming from the rear and it sounded like from the rear left and also that shimmy that she was complaining about you could feel it at about I don't know 40 miles an hour kind of seat of your pants not the steering wheel steering wheel is pretty smooth but you can feel it in the seat uh, and as you get up to like 70 miles an hour you could really start to feel it. the whole car is shaking so you know verified that uh, and then the humming sound is coming from the rear left so is this all related um, for example can a loose wheel bearing you know if the wheels kinda shimming a little bit 
could that also cause a loss of signal from the TPMS sensor if it, you know, the sensor is vibrating in there like it's not supposed to be. Um, so I'm going to pull it in the shop here, uh, pick up the rear end and spin the, the rear wheels and see what we can find. I hope all these problems are related. Um, so I'm going to pull it in and we'll see what we find. So I got the rear of the car jacked up here so I can spin the wheels by hand. Spinning the wheel, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but the inside right here it looks pretty cupped. So there's some low spots, high spots, low spots, high spots. I think that was causing our roaring noise. Brakes dragging a little bit, but if you look from the back of the tire, you spin it, it's not going side to side, and the bearing doesn't, you know, there's no play in there. So, uh, at this point, I might buzz the wheel off, check uh, why the brake is dragging a little bit, but <clears throat> I mean, cupping like this will cause that poor alignment. Um, I don't know, I guess we have to explore our options here. Alright, we're going for another test drive. <clears throat> With the rear wheels, they were uh, both cupped on the inside, but I don't know if that has anything to do with the TPMS. But in any case, I swapped the rear left and the rear right. So we're going to see which of the uh, uh, data pits here if any still shows zero so if we can reproduce the fault and if it stays with the rear left so you can see here um, let's go back to our IDs so now the rear right and the rear left should be swapped I mean I didn't reprogram them <clears throat> into the BCM but you know, if we see a fault for the rear left, we still know it's that sensor, even though it's on a different wheel. Okay, let's uh, let's take a first spin. Now, to get our readings, we actually need to go over 25 miles an hour. You see, they're popping up. There you go. So they're all present right now. There are no faults. So I'm going to go for another 10 mile spin and see if any of these drop out. All right, this is very interesting. Uh, I could recreate the fault, and uh, looking at our IDs here, I'm just comparing from the Maxi TPMS tool, which reads the sensor IDs, and, you know, when you put it to the wheel and press this button here. Uh, the rear right ID, that new sensor from Napa, you see it read 00CC10DD. And on the scan tool, we're reading 4410DD. So CC is not 44. Something's up here. Um, let me double check the uh, the ID. But this is this is kind of weird. The sensor can't really change its ID on its own. I don't think. So. Let's do this. I'm gonna shut the car off. Let's look at our pressures. So we have all zeros. We start the car. And at this point, I'm not sure what wakes the sensors up. Sometimes you'll get one or two pop up when you're in park, but then they should all come up when you're going faster than 25 miles an hour. So see that? 34.7 rear left. That's weird. That sensor came back on its own like it didn't go to sleep. So let's so this tool can trigger the sensor and read the information. So as we trigger the sensors these data pits should come online. So let's try that. So we're going to restart our program here, select our vehicle, 
So now he wants me to trigger all of the sensors in a row. So front left, let's do that. All right, cool. There's our ID. And did it wake up the front left sensor? Sure enough, it did. So let's go to the front right. All right, cool. So now our front right should be online. Front right. So now there's one that woke up before it was told to the rear left and the rear right so next one rear right which is since we swapped them the car thinks this is the rear left check that out I don't know if you saw that and this guy right here Beautiful. So now they're all online. And we can review our data on the tool here. Front left, front right. Now look, the rear right, now the ID came up as 004410DD. I got it on camera. A little while ago, 00CC10DD, and that's from the sensor. So that's that's really bizarre. Why is it putting out a different ID? I think that might explain our our issue here. And that's that's the last one. So all the other ones match. Now I'm gonna drive it back home and see if we can uh, get the false ID to pop up again. All right, we have recreated the fault. Rear left is not registering. So let's take our tool and see what the ID number is right now. All right, so data from that sensor. There it is, 4410DD. That is the correct ID number. And when I triggered it, sure enough, it came it came back on the scan tool. So uh, the problem here is definitely in the sensor because if you manually trigger it, the car you know sees it and everything's good, but it's it's falling asleep when it should not be falling asleep. And I don't know if the ID number is getting corrupt at times intermittently or what's going on, but aftermarket sensors, I mean, I guess that's what you get. So this owner, she might have to invest in an OEM. Nissan TPMS sensor to uh, fix this problem. All right, guys. Hope you learned something new. I know I did. This was a uh, you know, first for me seeing a aftermarket sensor that's intermittently falling asleep. It's not a battery problem, um, but that's that's what it is. So thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. All right, guys. A little late night with the Altima here. We're getting her back on track. Let me uh, explain what what the progress is and uh, where we're going from here. Obviously, got a little late night techno on the boombox. So today I went to Napa, and got that TPMS sensor warrantied. They're happy to replace it, so might get another year out of the new one. And what I did was uh, installed it and programmed it uh, in with the Varus together with the TPMS, you know, the Maxi TPMS tool. And what I found was the left rear wheel, the one with the bad sensor, and the one that was really severely chopped in the inside, was also out of balance, like ounces, like two ounces probably. So we got the wheel rebalanced, new sensor, programmed in. 
Uh, but what was the cause of the uh, severe cupping? Now the other side, the right rear, was also a little cup but not as badly as the left rear. So let's take a look. So what we have to do here is check the alignment of the rear end. Now in this case, I already did it, but I'll just get quick, give you the quick summary. The two adjusting points are that rear control arm where the spring, see the spring cup right here, and then the front control arm. So basically you can set the rear toe and camber. And uh, I haven't done a video on this yet, but this is just uh, you know, for demo purposes. That's all it is. A freaking stick, some kite string, and a little binder clip to hold her down. And what you do is you measure, obviously I took the plastic wheel cap off to get more accurate readings, but you measure from the string to here, to the rim, and down here. And from that, if you know the wheel diameter, you just do a simple trigonometry calculation and you get your angle. So negative camber would be if the wheel's tilted in from, uh, from vertical, positive camber is tilted out. And uh, in this case, I have to be careful to account for the slope of the floor because it's sloped so you know the water drains into here. And I actually calculated that and it's 0 0.6 degrees sloping, you know, this way. <laughs> uh, first my camera measurements weren't making sense. But looking at our spec sheet for the rear wheels, we're aiming for negative 0 0.6 degrees. So that's basically what the floor was. Okay, so one of them is going to show exactly vertical and the other one's going to show 1.2 degrees uh, if everything's aligned. Now before and after I found that the left rear wheel was actually pretty far off. We started at it was, it was basically a degree, a whole degree off, like too much. It was 1.6 and we brought it back to 0 0.6 like the specs say. Okay, and you can see the the tolerance is 1.1.6, so it was it was beyond, you know, out of out of spec. And that's why our wheel was cupping. The right rear wheel was pretty close. It was about four tenths of a degree off, and we brought it back back to spec here. Okay, so that's done. I also checked the toe in, and that the spec here is zero. And sure enough, you know, the, uh, it's neutral, so 0 sixteenths and 0 sixteenths here. And we did that with a traditional string along the car, which I've showed in previous videos. So, it's perfect, right? Uh, unfortunately, the tire has uh, seen better days, so since I didn't tell the customer to get an alignment when I first put the tires on, I might have to, uh, to eat this one because she, you know, I, I understandably was upset only getting 20,000 miles out of, uh, out of the rears. So, not the tire's fault. I guess uh, I overlooked the possibility of the camber being out of, out of spec. I mean, usually you don't see that, but when I was doing the alignment down here, I, uh, on the cam bolts, you can see someone's already been there, someone marked them up. So, when she bought it, that's the way it was which is a shame that it ate up a couple tires but we did get to the bottom of this so last thing to do take a test drive make sure all of our tire pressures show normal and the sensor is not going to sleep and that's going to be it